Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to kind of do a question and answer thing, and uh, you probably can tell from the way I'm starting is that I'm trying to tread very lightly here because I'm. it is never, ever my intent to ever hurt anybody or insult them or, or make them feel like they're not good enough or any of that stuff. Uh, never do I want to do that. You know, I always try for people to grow and to learn and have more understanding and to know that God loves us and he wants us to walk like Jesus, to be sons and daughters uh, just like Jesus, to walk in Jesus' identity as well as in Jesus' power and his health and everything else. So with all of that said, Please hear my heart here. I'm, I'm going to answer a question, and I'm going to tell you through Scripture. I'm going to use Scripture, and I'm going to just blend in with that what I have learned through experience going and doing healing and all of this, okay? So so I pray that this will bless you, and, and uh, please forgive me if anyone is offended by the things that I'll teach today, okay? So let's just get started. So the question was, is uh, if God heals people, uh, why do some people stay healed and some people uh, lose it immediately? Some people go a period of time and, and then lose it, but why doesn't everyone stay healed? Well, let me start here by saying this, and and I hope you do hear my heart here. Did you know that Scripture does not say that everybody Jesus healed stayed healed? Okay. All we know is that the power of God flowed through Jesus and healed anybody and everybody he came in contact with. But we don't know because we do know there is a possibility for people to get sick again because Jesus said that to the crippled man in John chapter 5 at the pool of Bethesda, he told the guy, go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. And I read that and I think, what could be worse, Jesus? I mean, the guy's been crippled for 38 years, okay? But obviously, the man had something in his life that could hinder him from keeping his healing. Now, that's what I do get out of that scripture. So now let me go in and just talk to you a little bit about what I see in the Bible as well as uh, what I also uh, see in my experience of going about healing people, okay? So let me just flip over to a couple of scriptures and let me start here. Uh, a lot of times what we see in the Bible is that when we are born again, every born again believer Number one, they need to make Jesus their Lord. I say this over and over. we got to make Jesus our Lord, not just our Savior. Okay, so I got my get out of hell free card. No, we have to make Jesus first place in our lives. When we do that, okay, he has permission to work in us to make us better and to change us. And here's another thing. When Jesus starts working in your life, you will become less selfish and start loving people more because it's not about you, you, you all the time. And that's the kind of my hang-up with the sinner's prayer. It's always about me, me, me. Don't send me to hell. Don't judge me. Forgive me for what I've done. And that's all good and fine if if our heart is true and, and pure toward our past and we want to lay that down. But the Bible does teach that when you come to Christ, Part of your repentance is wanting to lay down who you used to be. The old man dies and a new man resurrects. So we make Jesus our Lord and give him permission to be in our lives to change us. Then we get water baptized. That is absolutely biblical. That is part of becoming a believer. And then we get baptized in Holy Spirit and receive the baptism, the gift of the Father, the baptism of Holy Spirit. And now we're setting out in the right path to, to manifest and receive all the good things that the Father has paid for through Jesus and been able to release through Holy Spirit. Okay, so with that said, uh, when we uh, are healed or someone has uh, laid hands on us to heal us, here's some things uh, and it's not just in healing, it's in our everyday walk, okay? This is not just for people trying to seek healing and to stay healed. This is every believer who wants to be like Jesus and become more than a conqueror 
to become overcomers of the world. It, it's a must. There is no way around it, okay? So let me get in here and start teaching this, okay? Here we are. I'm just going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 2 through 4, and it's just in the American Standard Version. It's not expanded or anything, but I just want to read this to you. Grace to you and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And here's how. Through the knowledge of him that called us by his own glory and virtue, whereby he has granted unto us his precious and exceeding great promises, that through these you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, I could preach and teach on this for about two hours, okay? But what Peter just said is that we can grow in grace and in peace. It can be multiplied in our own lives through the knowledge of Jesus so what that's telling me is that we have to know more about who Jesus is and become more like Jesus, To and, and we do that through the Word of God, by the way. And what happens is that we become partakers of His divine nature, escaping the corruption of the world. Okay, did you know part of God's divine nature is sinless, walking in health, and having all the fruit of the Spirit, manifesting all of the gifts of the Spirit that Paul talks about in Corinthians. So right here, we are linked into multiplying and growing and seeing the divine power that gives us life and godliness, and we increase that through the knowledge of Jesus, which gives us the benefit of becoming more like Him, His divine nature, and we escape from the corruption of the world. That right there is one scripture. I want to go a little further here. Watch, this is uh, 3 John chapter 2. That's a short little letter that uh, the Apostle John wrote. And I'm just going to read this one little scripture. Watch, it says, Beloved, the ones I love dearly, I pray with respect to all things that you may prosper and be in health, just as your soul is, pro is prospering. Watch this. This is a current tense. He has locked and linked these two things together. Prosperity is not necessarily about money. Prosperity is to do well in all things, okay? It, it's, it can be about health or, or relationships. It can be about money. But what I want you to see here is that John is linking being prosperous Okay, prospering in all things and being in health. There's no confusion about what he means there to be in health, physical health. And watch, here's the key. Just as your soul is prospering. If your, your soul is your mind, will, and emotion, it's who you are, your personality, how you think. If your soul is still in the world, and you're thinking like the world, you're going to get what the world has, which is lack of peace, lack of joy, lack of kindness, all the fruit of the Spirit. You just put a lack of in front of all of that, and that's what you get when you think on and study and continuously live in the world. And there's no blending the two. You, you have to choose which one you want to go after. Okay, so as our soul prospers, our mind, will, and emotion prospers, everything else, including our physical health, will prosper along with the way that we think. And now i got to give you one more scripture to prove this out. I'm going to go over to Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, and this is in the Amplified Classic, okay? And this is a very, very important part of what I'm showing you today. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies as a living sacrifice devoted, holy, 
consecrated and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Okay? What he's just telling you is that if you are a believer, you need to dedicate your physical body to God, which means that you need to take better care of it sometimes, okay? But let me go on into verse 2 because this is where I really want to talk about it. Do not be conformed to this world or this age, fashioned after and adopt, adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, be changed by the entire renewal of your mind and its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Okay, so this last verse, a lot of people get it really mixed up and uh, twisted. But watch, I want to read it in the expanded right here. I'm just going to pick up on this. It says, then you will be able to discern and approve, prove out for yourself what God wants for you and his will, and to know what pleases him for your life. Okay, so basically what Paul is saying is that if you want to change who you used to be, whether it's the way you used to think about your relationships that you have with other people, if it's changing how you feel about yourself, or if it's about changing your physical health, you have absolutely got to decide that you want to dig into the Word of God, you've got to get some good teachings in you. If you're seeking to be healthy and hang on to your health, you have got to do something to help God keep you that way. God himself and his power, Jesus paid, okay, God provided it, Jesus purchased it, and Holy Spirit provides the power for every single person to walk in health, divine health, Here's the key. We have to cooperate with God, and the way we do that is we renew our mind, we change how we think about ourselves, about other people, even about God. Some of us have some bad stinking thinking still about God and whether he wants people to be healed. See, we've got to change that. We've got to get the junk out of the trunk and put the good stuff in. And we get the good stuff through looking at Jesus agreeing with the Word of God in who He says we are. And any time I minister to people who's got stinking thinking about God or themselves, the first things I start doing is sending them Dan Moeller's uh, teachings about their identity and who they are in Christ. And sometimes I will send out Andrew Womack's teachings on who God is because you got to get those two things fixed in your mind. You got to believe that God's a good God and he loves you. And then you got to believe what he says about you, that you're valuable to him and that you're not some old worm or worthless, that he paid a big price for you and he loves you. And watch here, I'm going to lock it right back in before I close this last verse that people get twisted about God's perfect, acceptable will. All this verse is saying is when you start renewing your mind, you're going to know what God wants for you is always good and health and life and godliness is always good, okay? So God bless you and I'll see you right back here. I love you. Bye-bye.